Banca is the coffee that lets you sleep. But now, wake up. It's time for the Baby Snook Show. Star Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks with Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Carmen Dragon and his orchestra, and vocalist Bob Graham, and our special guest of the day, Eddie Cantor. And brought to you by Sanka Coffee, the coffee that's 100% flavor rich, so you'll always enjoy it, and 90% caffeine free, so it will never interfere with sleep. It is late afternoon in the Higgins household in Sycamore Terrace, and Baby Snooks has not come home from school. Daddy and Mommy are frantic with worry. Daddy has been making a tour of the town in search of Snooks, and he's just now coming in the house. Is that you, Lancelot? Yes, dear. Did Snooks come home? No. Didn't you find her anywhere? Not a trace. I went to the park, the drugstore, the movie theater. What was playing? (laughs) What's that got to do with it? It was called Flaming Passion. Snooks wouldn't be interested in seeing that. Oh, no. No, of course not. She's already seen it four times. <laughs> well, I don't know where else to look for her. Did you try the bakery shop? Bakery shop? Yes. Mrs. Schultz tells me she often goes in there and steals the coffee cake. <laughs> I should have thought of that. Take your feet off that chair. Oh, yes, dear. Say, do you think she could be at the public library? No, no, I doubt it. Isn't her library card in that big book there? Oh, yes. My, what did she take this book out for? A critical analysis of pre-Renaissance Gothic architecture. (laughs) Now, what did she take out a big book like that for? It makes more spitballs. (laughs) Oh, what's the matter with that kid? Mm. Well, remember, you're her father. Mm. Watch your ashes. Oh, oh, yes, dear. Doesn't she know that's public property? Well, just wait till she comes home. Oh, I wish she would come home. Well, don't you worry, dear. She'll show up. I have Uncle Louie and Aunt Sophie out hunting for her. This isn't the first time she's been late. But not this late. An ice cream for dinner, and she hasn't done anything naughty. Nothing that we know of. Maybe that's no... It's Uncle Louie. Don't slam the door. Remember the picture? Hang the picture up again, Lancelot. Yes. The house... Any news, Uncle Louie? Oh, not a thing. My bookie skipped town. <laughs> oh, we don't care about the races. Oh? Didn't you go to the police station? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, that I did. I didn't think you knew. Oh, please, Uncle Louie. Please tell us what happened. Oh, it was nothing. I pleaded guilty and they let me off with a small fine. <laughs> small fine? Yeah. I sent you to the police station to find out about Snooks. I gave... Well, so you did. But how do you like that? The low-down sheets took my check without batting an eye. I'll assume that check turns out to be good. <laughs> oh, a lot of help you've been. Well, what about Snooks? A great little girl. Great. Louie, and... try to be sensible. Don't you realize Snooks is gone? How did you ever arrange it? No. <laughs> Maybe something terrible has happened. Can't you think where she might be? Uh, let me see. I'll, I, uh, I have it. I have it. I'll go look in the pool parlor at the corner. Oh, don't be ridiculous. What would she be doing at the pool parlor? Well, you know, Snooks. Maybe she's behind the eight ball again. So, <laughs> I'll go down and see. Uh, goodbye, folks. <laughs> Louie, don't try to... Go on. Hang the picture up again, Lancelot. Yes, dear. Well, answer the phone, Lancelot. Oh, yes, dear. Hello? Hello, Lancelot, dear boy. It's Aunt Sophie. Uh, did you find out anything, Aunt Sophie? About Snook? No. The most unfortunate thing happened. I fainted. Uh huh. In front of whose mansion? Uh, the Van Pistons. And you'll never guess what. They just happen to be having a big, swanky party. 
Well, however did you know? Well, last week you sprained your ankle and they had to carry you into the Kensington's tea dance aunt. The week before you had a sunstroke. Now, never mind. They just happened to be unfortunate accidents. Why don't you forget your phony social aspirations? After all, we both know you used to be a waitress in a hash house. Why, that's That is merely a figment of your imagination. All right. Forget about it, Aunt Sophie. Just bring me some hot cakes. One stack of each coming up! <laughs> Weekend guest. Since when is it three years from Friday to Monday? Lancelot. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. It's just that I'm so upset about Snooks. Well, I'm going to do something practical right now. I'm going over to the radio station. Eddie Cantor is doing a program. Maybe he'll broadcast an appeal about Snooks. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Cantor, we're ready for your number. All right. All right, thank you, sir. Now, remember, Union, I go back on the air with my program September the 26th. It's only 10 days away. Now, let's run over. I'm going to love that gal. Make it good. Huh? I'm going to love that gal like she's never been loved before. I'm going to show that gal she's the baby that I adore. When she's in my arms again, our dreams will all come true. Then the years between might never have been. We'll start our lives anew. I'm going to kiss that gal like she's never been kissed before. And though I miss that gal, she's the baby I'm waiting for. We'll never part again. She'll hold my heart again forever and never more. I'm gonna love that gal like she's never been loved before. Sister, I can hardly wait. Feel my heart palpitate. We'll never part again. You'll hold my heart again forever and never more. I'm going to love that gal. I'm going to kiss that gal. I'm going to love that gal like she's never been loved Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. I'm Lancelot Higgins. Do you run this studio? Run the studio? If I ran it, do you think I'd let myself get away with the things I get away with? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Eddie Cantor. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Cantor, I came here for help. Well, I get pleasure out of helping people. What, uh, what is your trouble? My little daughter is lost. I see. Would you like to borrow one of mine? <laughs> oh, no, no. Take your choice. There's Marilyn and Marjorie. There's Janet. Yes, there's Edna. I, I can just, go on like this for days, you know. I just want my own dear little Snooks. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Higgins. An only child, no doubt. I have three others. How many children have you? I don't know. When I left home this morning, Ida was... Huh? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Higgins, I've been in the maternity ward so often they served me aspirin with my monogram on it. <laughs> So, you see, I'm in a position to give you some advice. Oh, thank you. You say you have four little girls, huh? No, two of them are boys. Boys. In that case, you can give me some advice. <laughs> Please, Mr. Cameron. I thought if only we could make some sort of radio appeal, we might find Snooks immediately. Well, I'll speak to my announcer, Harry Von Zell. Maybe he could slip in the announcement with his commercial, huh? Oh, swell. I don't know how to thank you. No need. Glad to do it. Now, let me take some notes on her appearance. What does your little girl look like? Uh, well, did you see Meet Me in St. Louis? Oh, yes. You mean she looks like Margaret O'Brien? No, Marjorie May. <laughs> and now she's lost. Yes. Let me be the first to congratulate you. Oh, but you don't understand. I want to find her. Well, everybody to his taste, but I warn you, the older they get, the harder they are to lose. <laughs> That's what George Gessel told me. I'll tell you what I want to do. Anyhow... 
I'm pretty good at this sort of thing. When did you first notice that she was missing? Well, not for quite a while. I was busy in my laboratory working on a new invention, a fuel substitute. Really? Yes. It's a powdery substance. You simply drop it in water and use it for gas. What's it called? Salopatica? <laughs> Seriously, why don't you take me home with you? Perhaps I can track her down for you. Oh, no, I wouldn't ask oh, you. Let's be on our way. I want to meet your family. Well, you asked for it. Well, there they go, Wilcox. But I bet they'll never be able to find Snooks. Well, Carmen Dragon, I suppose you could. Oh, maybe. Remember how the Pied Piper of Hamlin called all the children to him with music? Yeah. Well, suppose I try to get Snooks that way. Listen. All right. Come out, come out. Say, maybe you ought to use your musical influence on those grown-ups who are disturbed by the caffeine and the coffee they drink. You know what their first words are every morning, don't you? That's right. They never sleep a wink. The caffeine in their coffee keeps them awake. Now, if they drink Sanka coffee, they'd sing a different tune. Because Sanka coffee has had 97% of the caffeine taken out, so it can't interfere with sleep. And have you heard how wonderful Sanka coffee tastes? You bet it's good. Fragrant, delicious, roaster fresh, too. You'll never miss a wink of sleep, and you'll always enjoy every cup you drink of Sanka coffee. Carmen Dragon and his orchestra with June is busting out all. Well, I've got someone here who might help us. Dear, I'd like you to meet Eddie Cantor. How do you do? Are you one of Snook's little friends? <laughs> Madam, don't let my young appearance fool you. I'm old enough to be Snook's brother. Older brother, oldest. Oh, ooh, ah. Mommy, this is Eddie Cantor. Who? Oh, you know him. If you knew Susie, and I know Susie. Oh, 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 what a gal. Oh, that's a lot. Lancelot, how can you act so stupid at a time like this? Stupid? I've made a good living. Seriously, Mrs. Higgins. 
Now, Mrs. Higgins, I came here to be of assistance. I want to do anything I can to help you find Snoop. Oh, I've been racking my brain. I noticed a funny sound here. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, you know, just before you came in, I almost established contact with her. What's that? Oh, don't mind her, Eddie. She thinks she's psychic. Well, don't scoff. It's perfectly possible. All women have a sort of a sixth sense. They do. Did you ever try to sneak into 3 a.m. after a poker game? I see what you mean. Sure, they're all equipped with radar. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding, Mrs. Higgins. You stay here and try to contact Snooks. Mr. Higgins, would you show me the place where she was last seen? All right, it was up in the twins' nursery. Come on, let's go. <laughs> nice, uh, nice little house you've got here. Well, it wasn't this nice when we bought it, no. We've made changes in a lot of the rooms. Here's the baby's nursery. Baby's nursery? I bet you made a lot of changes in here, too. <laughs> I have... I'd like to have a nickel for every one I folded and pinned on those two babies. Me too, me too. I was as fast as lightning in my day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you're probably pretty, pretty rusty now. Oh, I don't know. One doesn't lose a touch. Wouldn't be a bit surprised if I could beat you right now. Bet you ten dollars. You're on. You take one of the twins, and I'll take the other. Yeah. Here's yours. Yeah. Oh, sure. Mine would cry. Sure, sure. This was a better idea than we thought. Ready? Ready. All clear for action? All clear. Material unfolded? Material unfolded. Pin free and clear? Pin free and clear. No. Roger. Once, Once over. over. Twice, Twice over. over. Up, Up we go. go. Under, Under we go. go. Left side. Right side. Hey, no pen. No matter what I do. You can't do that. You forgot the powder. Well, I always use the powder afterwards. <laughs> After you've diapered them? How? How? I leave an opening. That's how. <laughs> Quiet. Here comes Aunt Sophie. Well, what's going on here? Oh, we put daisies on the baby. Uh, oh. Babies on the daisies. Uh, <laughs> daisies on the baby. He said, Bobby, I would have killed him. <laughs> you both have a... <laughs> oh. oh, say. Well, you both have a poor sense of direction. Look how high up you've got them. You've gagged the kids. <laughs> Well, we felt we could use a gag here. <laughs> a comedian! Oh, he certainly is. This is Eddie Cantor. What? The Eddie Cantor? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, Mr. Cantor. Why, I remember the first time I saw you. What a memory. Really? Yes. <laughs> Why, you had been a star for years. Years? Take yes. it easy. Take it easy now. Well, yes, I got in for half price. Yeah, why? <laughs> Were you in the service? Uh... <laughs> I didn't know they had wax in the Civil War. <laughs> why, Mr. Cantor, I take back all the nice things I said about you. I bid you Avar Dupoy. Dupoy on you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. It's getting later and still no sign of snow. Now, you say you last saw the child here in the nursery? Oh, no. I didn't see her. No? The cook, Sunshine, was the last to see her. Well, let me speak to her. Well, I'll ask her if she'll see you. You'll ask her? Tell her. Tell her I want to speak to her. Evidently, you don't have help at your house. Of course not. Not with six women in the house. I simply bought each of them a carpet sweeper and I stand in the middle of the room and direct traffic. <laughs> well, now, look. Why don't you tell me what you want to ask the cook, and I'll ask her while I'm doing the dishes tonight. Don't tell me she makes you wash the dishes. Oh, only takes minutes. Yeah, but why do you have to do it? Why not your wife? Well, who'd sit with the cook's child? Oh, of course. <laughs> I never thought of that. It's really not so bad. She gets every Thursday night off. Who, the cook? No, my wife. <laughs> why do you let her get away with so much? Well, cooks are hard to get. Besides, she can lick me. Yeah. Well, I'll be able to handle her. Come on, Higgins, to the kitchen. I'll see sunshine. Is the kitchen right here? Mm -hmm. Sunshine, I'd like a word with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's the word. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sunshine, don't you know who this is? He's a famous radio comedian. Oh, come right in, Mr. Holt. <laughs> no. This is Eddie Cantor. 
Eddie Cantor. Well, come right in. Oh, you like me, huh? No, I just want to see how it feels to have ham in the kitchen again. <laughs> Let's get out of here, Higgins. Wait, you said you were going to tell her off. Don't be silly, Higgins. Why should I talk harshly to her? She might be somebody's father. <laughs> Come on. We'll resume our search for baby Snooks in a few moments. But now, we'd like to have you meet our young singing star, Paramount Pictures, Bob Graham, singing How Deep is the Ocean. A little refreshment for our guest. If you mean that so-called radio comedian, no. Oh, now, now. Look, I'll fix it. Let's see, now, where would the coffee be? Not in the oven. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, of course not. Uh, oh. Well, here we are. Thank you, coffee. Hmm. What a coffee, Higgins. What? Why, thank is the coffee that lets everybody sleep. It's got the caffeine taken out, that's why. You see, it's the caffeine in coffee, not the coffee itself, that robs so many people of sleep. How did you get in here again, Wilcox? Oh, I was just passing by the kitchen window when I heard you say sank a coffee. And at once I said to myself, Wilcox, if you're half the man I think you are, you'll go right in there and see if Mr. Higgins has had any news about Snooks. So here I am. Huh. And I... Wouldn't be the sanker. Say, did you ever taste a coffee that could compare with it in richness and freshness and body? Why, a man would be mad to pass up a cup of Sanka coffee. But uh, don't get me wrong. If I had to choose between Snooks and Sanka coffee... There isn't any news of Snooks, Wilcox. Oh, too bad. Well, I'll just finish up my coffee and go, then. I know you'd rather be alone at a time like this, Higgins. So long. <laughs> Now, back 
to our search for baby Snooks. Well, we've gone through the house, Mr. Campbell. Are you sure you've told me everything, Higgins? Everything I know. And I've spoken to everybody in your family? Everybody except Uncle Louis Groot. Well, where is he? Oh, here we are, back in the living room. Uncle Louis! Get out from under that sofa. Well, all right. But if you weren't such a cheapskate, I wouldn't have to search for your cigars like a sneak thief. <laughs> if you'd buy your own, I wouldn't have to hide them all the time. I choose to take that as an insult. I've got a good mind to pack up and leave. Oh, yes? Right after supper. Uh, uh, who's your bug-eyed companion here? Who's his... Bug-eyed? Uh, Louie. That's no way to talk to a guest in my house. This is Eddie Cantor. And he's going to ask you a few questions. Yeah. I've got an alibi, Mr. Roberts. Stand in my mind. Wait, wait, wait a minute. 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 It was a nice conversation we had. Look, I'm not a detective. I just want to ask you a few amateur questions. Oh, well, go ahead. I'll give you a few professional answers. <laughs> Being questioned is nothing new for Louis. Well, don't worry. He won't outsmart me. What's your name? Louis Groot. Where were you born? New Orleans. How old are you? Fifty-five. Are you a citizen? Yeah, are you? Yes. Age? Fifty-three. Born? New York. Name? Eddie Kent. Who's asking who? <laughs> Is he? I told you you wouldn't get anything out of him. Well, <laughs> I'll be running along. Don't hesitate to call on me. Goodbye, Mr. Groot. Uh, so long, bug eye. Bug eye. Don't run. Or such strange people. Yes, I wish I could lose him instead of Snooks. Oh, poor little Snooks. I'm terribly sorry I haven't been able to help you, Mr. Higgins. Of course, I will make an announcement on the radio, but I, I wish I could do something in the meantime. Oh, you couldn't do anything. Nothing can take the place of my little girl. Not even me? You. Well, I feel I've been listening to Snooks so often I could use oh, just as really? well... Oh, really? That's impossible. Why, Daddy? Oh, no! No, not that. I want to be Snooks. Now, how can you? You're Eddie Catter and Snooks is Snooks. I want to be Snooks! This is silly. You're not a child. What am I? What do you think you are? An elephant. You are not. When I grow up, Daddy, can I be an elephant? Why, of course not. Why should you want to be an elephant? So I can squirt water through my nose? <laughs> Look... Let me tell you something. All right. I'll sit on your lap. No. You want to sit on my lap, Dad? Aren't you acting a little bit silly? Uh-huh. Of course, it's way past my bedtime, Daddy. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Tuck me in my little bed and put me to sleep, Daddy. Oh, sure. I carry you up to the nursery and tuck you in bed. Anything else you want? Yes. What? Kiss me. Oh, no, no. What? I want to get out of bed. What for? You know. I'm thirsty, Daddy. I'm thirsty. Uh, never mind. I'm not listening. You'll be sorry. I'm sorry enough now. Don't bother me. If I don't bother you and go to sleep, can I go out and play with the girls tomorrow, Daddy? Oh, what would you be doing playing with little girls? Who said anything about little girls? <laughs> That's the last straw. You uh, want to be Snooks, eh? Uh-huh. And you want me to treat you just like I treat her? Yeah. Come here, dear. Here I am, little Daddy. Oh. What do you want? This. Ah! I'm sorry, Mr. Cather. For a minute, I forgot myself. You see, it did you some good. It helped you forget. And believe me, Mr. Higgins, I'll keep on trying to find your little girl. I'm going to make that radio announcement tonight. What are you going to say? Just this. If anybody discovers the whereabouts of Snooks, please get in touch with her daddy, Lancelot Higgins, in Sycamore Terrace. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> Program in the series, introducing the new Baby Snooks show, which will star Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks, with Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Carmen Dragon and his orchestra, and Bob Graham vocalist. Stay tuned to this station for the Adventures of the Thin Man, which follows station identification. And be sure to listen next week at the same time for another Baby Snooks show. Our guests then will be Sidney Greenstreet, Robert Benchley, and Peter Laurie. Harlow Wilcox speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcast.